Hey everybody, it's Teacher Alexis. I was just being a little bit silly with you guys. Welcome back to Learning with Teacher Alexis. I hope that you guys are doing spectacular. That's a long word. It starts with S and S. Um, so, today we are saying hello to whoa 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 wednesday and goodbye to yesterday which was tuesday so today's wednesday <clears throat> yesterday was tuesday and today is not 21 we have to add one more so that makes it 22 and it's still the year 2020 and it's still spring. We have a few more months, maybe two months, a little less than two months, until it's summertime, which is a fun, fun time. I like summer. So, that's the day of the week. It is Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. And now we need to sing. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you today? How are you guys? As you can tell, I'm a little bit silly right now. I don't know what's coming come over me. Maybe it's what I ate for breakfast. I don't know, but I'm in a silly, silly mood. And I hope that you guys are in a great mood. But if you're not, you could always change it around. There's a lot of hours in a day. So, today, before we sing What's the Weather, I'm going to read a special book afterwards that a friend wanted me to read. But, as you can see, we need to see what the weather will be. What's the weather? What's the weather? Go look outside. Go look outside. Tell us what the weather is. Tell us what the weather is. Go look outside. Is it hot or cold? Hey, those are opposites. Hot and cold are opposites. Is it sunny? or rainy oh those are opposites too wow i must it must be opposite day is it oh that's what the weather is oh thank you for letting me know here in pacifica it's a little bit overcast right now which means it's partly cloudy a little bit foggy and it's cold but as the day goes on and the sun's out more it usually warms up a little but we'll see um, so, to the special book that someone asked me to read, it's called Stella Starliner. And it's a hardcover book. Here. It sounds like a door. Who's there? Oh, it's Stella. And Stella's mom. <laughs> and this is what part of the book? The spine. It's what holds the pages together. And this is the back cover. So, Stella's Starliner, let me move over so I can read it, and you guys can see the pictures while I'm reading. Stella's Starliner, I've never read this book before, but hey, let's talk about it. Books have pictures, right? And then it has words. So, books are made up of pictures and words. And guess what? Books also have a few things in them. They have, one, they have characters. Two, they have a setting. Three, they have a beginning, a middle, and a end. So you have to keep those in mind, all right? So let's think about what characters we're hearing about. Where is this book taking place? It might change places throughout the book. And what's the beginning, what's the middle, and what's the end? Usually, the middle is part of uh, when things start getting either a little bit scary, 
a little bit sad, a little bit crazy, and then it starts getting better, 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 and then it ends. So that's why they always say, happily ever after. So let's get right into Stella's Starliner. <clears throat> Stella lived in a house by the side of the road. The house was completely silver. It was as silver as a comet in the sky. It was called the Starliner. You guys see the Starliner. And let's go. Inside was a room for sleeping, a room for being awake. There was a kitchen and a radio and a sofa that turned into a bed at the touch of a button. Stella had everything she needed in her silver home. Are you guys wondering what kind of house this is? If you don't know, you will know by the end of this book. Saturday night, Stella's daddy came home in his truck. He parked it outside the Starliner. Sunday morning, Stella's mama made pancakes for three in the tiny kitchen. Here's the red truck that's parked by that Starliner. And here's mama cooking some pancakes. Stella's daddy took Stella fishing on Sunday afternoon. When the sun went down, Stella's daddy kissed Stella and her mama. He gave them all the money in his pocket. Then he started up his truck and went to work for another week. Stella and her mama waved all the way down to the end of the mountain road. So the dad's gone for a whole week. How many days are in a week? If you said seven, you got it. That's a lot of days. I would miss my dad if he was gone for that many days. On Monday morning, Stella and her mama went to market. We'll make peach cobbler, said Stella's mama, and corn chowder, said Stella. Later, all the boys and girls cheered when the bookmobile came. Stella and her mama read their books until they knew them by heart. Stella didn't have to wor have a worry in the world. So they went to the market kind of like the farmer's market, to get some peaches to make a peach cobbler. And then the library on wheels came to get some new books. And then let's see what happens with Stella. Then one day, a band of weasels passed by after school. Is this where you live? The weasels asked Stella. Yes, said Stella, it's my silver home. Silver? <laughs> One weasel giggled. Tins can, tin can is more like it. It's an old trailer is what it is, said another. You must be poor, chimed a third. The weasels made jokes and snapped their gum all the way down the mountain road. Their words stung Stella's heart like the stings of a bee. So were they making thumbs up choices with Stella? Nope, they weren't. And that kind of hurt my heart to hear them say those kind of things. Do you think bees really stung Stella's heart? No, they didn't. That's a figure of speech that her heart hurt so much it felt like bees were stinging her, but they really weren't. It's just those words hurt hurt Stella a lot. At supper time, Stella could not eat. She wanted to tell her mama about the weasels, but didn't want her mama to feel the stings too. So she didn't want her mom to feel hurt. Evening fell on the Starliner. Stella could not sleep. Outside, the pine trees whispered in the wind. Stella thought she heard the weasels turning cartwheels in the night. And then, late in the night, Mama came to Stella's bedside. Something is wrong with my Stella, she said. So Stella told her Mama about the stinging words. Stella's mom gave Stella a kiss and said, look out the window. 
Hundreds of tiny lights spun by. Where are we, Stella asked. Sailing through the Milky Way, said her mama. Do you guys know what the Milky Way is? If you don't know what the Milky Way is, it's a constellation in the sky. Did you know that? It's stars that make a certain constellation that if you saw those stars in the line, you'd say, hey, the Milky Way. Daddy has hitched our Starliner to his truck. He's flying us far away through the night. Is this really happening? I don't know. Let's see. In the morning, the Starliner landed next to a big house. Two bunnies came out to say hello. One said, I'm Grace, and this is Stumpy. Is this your house, asked Stumpy? Stella didn't want to answer. Achoo! Sorry, I sneezed, but good thing I covered up my elbow. Stella didn't want to answer. So when the bunnies asked her, whose house is this? Is this your house? Why didn't she answer them? If you said because the weasels were making fun of her the last time, you got it. So basically, if you make fun of somebody for something, the next time that they're asked a question, they might be too afraid or too scared to get made fun of again that they won't answer. Your house is made of silver, Stumpy went on. Sterling silver, added Grace. You can tell? Our house is just plain old wood, said Stumpy. We want to see the inside, said Grace. Stella, Grace, and Stumpy played hide-and-seek in the Starliner's secret places. They turned the sofa into a bed and the bed back into a sofa with just the touch of a button. Hey, does your sofa turn into a bed and back into a sofa with the touch of a button? I doubt it. I doubt it. I wish mine did because it would be way easy to make my bed. You must be a millionaire to live in a silver house, said Grace. A zillionaire, said Stumpy. And Stella agreed, a squillionaire. Ha 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 ha. And that is the end. They're all eating pancakes together. So let's talk about this. Let me take a deep breath. And you take a deep breath too, girl. Yes. And, all right. So Stella, the Starliner, is about Stella who lives in a house called a motorhome. It connects to a car and it could drive all the way around and it has everything you need inside, but it's really, really small. But it's perfect for what it needs to be, to sleep, to eat, to hang out, and that's okay. Everybody lives in different types of houses. Some people live in big houses. Some people live in small houses. Some people live in apartments. Some people live in condos. Some people live in an in-law like I do. It's not even a house. It's just a room that has my bed, my couch, my bathroom, and my TV. And that's what it is. And so that's okay because we should all be grateful for one that we have a what over our head? Not Heyman's hat, a roof over our head, right? And so, did you see the weasels were making fun of her for the way she lived? But did she have a problem with the way she lived before? No. But when someone makes fun of you, it could really hurt your feelings, right? And so then she, because it's a motorhome, they connected the motorhome to a car, their car, they drove somewhere else, they found some new people, Stumpy and Grace, the bunnies, and they thought her house was so cool. So, the lesson in this story is this. One, don't make fun of people. It's not only a bad, a, a thumbs down choice, but it makes people feel bad. Two, it's okay to live in a different place. It's okay to be different. It's okay to think differently, but it's not okay to hurt people's feelings, right? And number three, 
if someone makes fun of you, just kind of swipe it off your shoulder and say, you know what? I can go find somebody that won't make fun of me to play with, or I can go do something else that makes me feel good. Deal? Give me a pinky promise. All right. So what I want you to do, because Stumpy and Grace made Stella feel amazing, I would love for you to make a card for someone that makes you feel amazing. So for example, I always have thank you cards like this that I buy at the store. And on the inside, I can write things or draw things and then send it in the mail to somebody, right? So I would like you to make a card for somebody and send it to them to tell them how much they mean to you. So for example, my best friend's name is Kendall. I could write to Kendall. Dear Kendall, thank you for being my best friend and always being there to make me laugh and play with me. And when I'm sad, you make me feel better. Love, your best friend, Alexis. And then I can put it in the envelope, write her address on it, put it in the mailbox, and then she'll get it. And guess what's going to happen when the person on the who gets the card, they're going to be like, oh, wow, I'm so happy I got this card. It made me feel so good. All right, so that's your job. Make a card for someone. Have your parents uh, write in it if you want something written and you can't write. Draw a picture for them. Put their address on the envelope. Get a stamp and put it in the mailbox on your walk. And guess what? I bet you you'll get a card back. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you. And make thumbs up choices. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. I will see you tomorrow.